I'm a developer down at the ADS. Uh, this paper was kind of done by me and uh, Ray Moore. Uh, Sir Jeff had some involvement in the background, so you can, you can chime in if I get anything wrong. Um, but today I'm just going to give a brief overview of the ADS for those of you who don't know. Um, then I'm going to go over the ADS Easy um, system uh, and project. Um, and then I think more interesting will be kind of talking about some future directions we'd like to take ADS Easy and how that might uh, affect you guys. Um, so for those of you who don't know, the ADS, we're a digital archive um, for archaeological data. Uh, we're based at the University of York. Um, we've been around since 1996, um, and uh, yeah, REMIT is basically to support research, learning, and teaching with high quality, dependable digital resources. Um, what most of that means to most of you guys will be the website. Um, we dis disseminate all of our data um, in addition to performing long-term preservation uh, responsibilities. Um, but if you want, if you want more information, uh, just visit the website. There's lots of stuff up there. Um, but ADS Easy, the project that we're going to talk about today, um, is uh, kind of was born out of a few things that we identified in the kind of workflows that, that we we operate within, um, from the depositor to the actual final archiving dissemination of the data, um, and we wanted something that would help. Uh, the depositor, think about the project archive and provide estimates for costs uh, of the deposition. Um, cost is a big thing, obviously, and following on from, from Mark's talk where, um, you know, you, we have to pay for this somehow, um, and that usually is, has to be done by the depositor. We don't want to charge people for the, the downloading and reuse of the data at the usage point. We want to charge it at the other end. Um, so having a, an open and kind of understandable uh, costing model, because I think that's some, sometimes seen as a bit of a mystery uh, for people that, that use our service. Um, so we want to kind of make it make it more open. Um, allow people to log in, create resource discovery metadata, which is one of our big problems uh, when we do get uh, data from people. Um, uploading files, checking costs, um, create follow metadata, uh, which isn't necessarily resource discovery metadata, so we're not talking about uh, it's a Roman site, or it's this kind of artifact, or this kind of uh, stuff in the actual content of the, of the data. Uh, we're talking about the, the nuts and bolts of the format, so what kind of version of JPEG is it, what kind of version of shapefile is it, um, so on and so forth. Um, and then also signing an e-license, uh, we, we, we have to get license uh, permission from the depositor, so uh, we've had the old-fashioned way of sending a, a letter and people signing and sending back, but uh, we wanted to up update that for the 21st century and do e-licenses, so uh, that was another objective. And those, um, we, these all kind of were born out of um, some work we've done with Wessex uh, with regards to their image archive that they deposit with us, which is kind of a semi-automated uh, system, um, and the Southampton City Council uh, archives, uh, basically are uploading, using us as their, their digital archive and, and uploading stuff uh, to our, our system. So basically, what, with that in mind, we wanted to uh, basically uh, create a semi-automated project-based system for the deposition of archaeological data and metadata. Like I said, the transparent costing module so people can understand more about where the costs are. Um, and also streamline the ADS infrastructure, because there's a lot of back and forth that we'll show in a second um, with regards to getting metadata information from depositors. So we uh, want to make that easier and, and therefore um, more cost-effective for us and, and for, the, um, uh, for the depositors. So this is the old model of how we, we manage deposits. Uh, Ray Moore showed this at CAA in Southampton last year. Um, and basically, it starts with you guys on the left, data creators. Uh, you'll send us an email or, a, or actually a physical uh, package of uh, some uh, storage media. Uh, it gets sent to us, the digital archivists, and then we would do the accessioning and ingest uh, stage. Um, what usually happened, though, is that wasn't the end of it. We had to keep on harassing the depositors because we didn't get the right metadata. Um, something looked out of place, uh, we had too many pictures of cats and other stuff that wasn't relevant. Um, we even had stuff where we, we don't do a lot of kind of quality control at this stage. We don't want to tell you guys what's relevant archaeologically and what's not, but there's some instances where there was a project that was occurred in the Red Sea. Um, we looked at the images and we're pretty sure we noticed the rock of Gibraltar um, in, the, in the pictures and thought that's probably not right. Um, they might have mixed up the pictures or something. So. Um, there's a lot of kind of this process that happens. Um, it usually annoys the depositors, and they just think, oh, I just want to, because what, when they deposit with us, they just want to give it to us, forget about it, and not worry about it. They've already published the interpretation and the monograph or, or articles. Uh, they just want to get rid of it. So this was always a very protracted, long process um, that, that tended to be a bit frustrating. Um, and then basically, once that accession 
the ingestion accession happens, um, then the digital archivist would take it into the collection manager system, and we go through the dissemination and preservation uh, uh, processes. So we thought we'd improve that, because um, we obviously still you know, need to manage these, these collections and, and want to disseminate an archive. But we thought we might come up with a better way of uh, that first bit, which was long and, and tortuous at times. Um, so the ADS Easy uh, project is the idea of creating a system that the depositor uses, uploads all their metadata, uploads the data, um, identifies uh, and tags effectively all the data with, with the appropriate information that's, that's, uh, that's relevant. Um, and then this basically gets loaded into our pre-CMS, um, and uh, this, this is where a lot of the um, uh, kind of uh, automated processes would happen. The, um, Basically, using Droid or we use Apache Tika now for file uh, format identification, um, creating checksums, virus checks, stuff like that. Um, so we're just trying to try to streamline that that first bit of the process, which is um, uh, the one that always took us a really long time. So this is uh, now I'll show you some screenshots. Uh, we didn't dare do a live uh, uh, demonstration of this. Uh, you start with screenshots, and it doesn't look exactly like this either uh, anymore. Uh, but this is the interface. Uh, basically, you can log in um, and basically manage projects uh, like, a, um, like you'd expect. Um, this is just a test one with a couple of projects here. Uh, you can create new projects, and we basically go through um, this whole workflow step-by-step uh, -step process for you, the depositor, to make it easier. Um, uh, one of the other things is we've tied it to the Oasis system. so. Uh, this is to help streamline if you have Oasis reports with, with the Oasis system. Uh, we can pre-populate the, the relevant fields in ADS Easy uh, appropriately. So in this example, uh, this report, the Oasis ID Cambridge 3 31126 um, and then basically getting all that information pulled out from the Oasis system and pre-populated for the project information. Obviously, uh, there's other stuff that we, we actually still need. Um, and so just basic stuff, project name descriptions, languages, uh, and this, this form goes on and on. Um, the other thing that obviously is important is the, um, uh, the uploading of data uh, and actual files. So uh, we have a little applet that you can drag and drop your files there. Um, you can add them. You can search your, your local machine and just upload them there. Um, this obviously has some issues if you have a lot of data. We wouldn't really recommend the system for, for big, massive data uh, deposits. Uh, this is more for, I think, smaller, um, more manager ones, because obviously you're pushing a lot of data over the internet. Um, uh, that can take time, um, and it's sometimes not very efficient. Um, but once you get the data into the system, we still need a way of actually identifying uh, the, the files and getting metadata associated with those. Um, and we realized that if you did have a lot of files in the system, you probably weren't necessarily going to want to uh, upload uh, all the information manually. Um, this is... Uh, in the manual form for uh, associating metadata with, with the uh, objects. Um, very, very basic, this, this example, this has been extended uh, as well to give more kind of resource discovery information, but the basic stuff, uh, checksums, uh, size, um, and some of this is pulled out automatically from these applications like Droid or Apache Tika, uh, but some of them, uh, they're not perfect, those, those, uh, that software, so, uh, we do uh, kind of need sometimes human help to, to figure those out. So, uh, for example, uh, identifying as Microsoft Word, Apache T could probably do that, but it might not be able to tell what version it is of Microsoft Word, which is obviously very important with regards to uh, free use. Um, but that you have to do for every single file you uploaded, but you obviously aren't always going to want to do that because you have a lot of files. Uh, you might already have the metadata managed in your own database, your own system. Uh, so basically, we, we provided a um, uh, batch processing, uh, so you can basically download uh, a, a spreadsheet that's uh, basically populated with identifiers that are of the, the files that have been loaded up into the system, um, and this is this has been extended further. So you can download this, it's got all the object IDs that have uh, the file name as well, and then you can basically fill this in in your own time. Uh, use your existing uh, database or spreadsheets that have the metadata for it, uh, populate those, and then just upload it back into the ADS Easy system. So it's not something that you're forced to kind of one by one go through uh, the metadata uh, creation for those objects. 
Um, and then the other thing that, that we wanted to provide, which is quite important, was the transparent costing module. So uh, we now have this uh, in place where you can, you don't have to actually log in and, and, and be um, an actual user of the system. You can just visit this uh, whenever you want. Uh, get an idea of, of, of how much things would cost uh, for depositing with us, um, roughly. This is obviously isn't, isn't the final uh, kind of official cost or anything, but this is just an example I just did really quickly. Uh, I kind of created my own little imaginary project with one database, uh, a few GIS um, shape files, and, and a bunch of images, and you can get the price there. We also compare, you can see down here, what it would cost for using our traditional method, uh, which is just giving us the data and, and, and having us do it. So um, we're hoping that ADS Easy is, is appealing to people because it will save people money um, uh, in the process. Um, but of course, like I said as well, this isn't the final kind of cost. We, we do take into account uh, various things, and, and as file counts go up, costs actually go down, because particularly in some, in some types of files, because they're easy to automate. Um, uh, the, the migration and management of them anyway. So um, this is just to give a rough idea for, for people to use. So, um, so basically, that's, that's the system. Um, I think we're, we're hoping to have it released uh, by the end of March, I think, or April. So um, we'll make a big announcement, and I think we're doing some more workshops in the process. But uh, hopefully it'll be something that's appealing to the commercial units as well, uh, cut down their costs, also allow an easy system for them to, to upload their, their data uh, into the ADS. But um, kind of two feature directions I want to talk about really quick. The first one is, is ADS Easy is a SORD client. And for those of you who don't know what SORD is, SORD is a, um, uh, a protocol based on the Atom Hub uh, protocol. Uh, it was developed under some GIST funding, and there's been a lot of work around it in Southampton and, and, and other uh, uh, universities. Um, basically, it's a way of moving data around. And the way that they've done this is, is um, it, it allows clients to basically upload uh, data to other repositories and, and things. And, and the ADS Easy project was born out of, uh, or it's, it's within the project that's on a sword arm. Um, and originally we had the idea that, well, with sword being a really, uh, it's, it's an actively developed protocol and it seems to be getting some traction, let's create uh, an endpoint for people to use sword clients to upload all this data to us. Uh, but we realized that actually sword's probably not that good for, for, uh, for that purpose. Um, actually, what sort would be better for would be um, would be actually using the ADS Easy system as a client and then pushing metadata and data around to other repositories. Um, so the idea that that, that I kind of have um, that I think would be really useful is if we can turn ADS Easy into a system that allows you to capture the metadata in a structured format and with all the information we need. And then it doesn't even necessarily be deposited with us at the ADS. We can actually then push it to UCL, we can push it to Southampton uh, repository, we can push it to the Bodmin, uh, wherever, wherever you're, you're, you're supposed to be depositing that, that data to. Um, so I think it, it, it's, it's got some potential because it could add some consistency, because these repositories aren't very good at resource, um, discipline specific uh, metadata capture. They don't know what information is important. They kind of know uh, basic formats and stuff like that. They won't necessarily know, uh, archaeologically speaking, what's important uh, to capture. So hopefully this ADS Easy system could turn into that where you can, you can basically prepare your archive with this system and then just push it on to, to whatever repository uh, is, is appropriate. Uh, the other one is I, I, don't go to, I don't give many talks without talking about linked data um, at some point anymore. So the obligatory linked data. Um, uh, mentioned it here, and this is uh, something that I've been kind of working on um, on the side uh, of kind of some other stuff, and it falls on from stellar projects that I've talked about elsewhere. Um, but I think linked data has got some potential um, to uh, to help uh, better describe this stuff that, that, that we're putting into ADS Easy. So uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, linked data is this idea of a bunch of big web of data. It's a semantic web, all these other things. Leaf talks about it all the time, and you can talk to him or me uh, on the side if you want, uh, if you want more information. Uh, but what linked data at the moment is really useful for, in my opinion, is using it as kind of a lookup process for figuring out, particularly when there's a SOAR that have been published as linked data, looking up and finding out what the actual official description of something is. Uh, the official identifier. So, for example, Ordnance Survey publishes some linked data of all their kind of places and entities. Uh, they have a really nice little uh, API, REST API, that you can do lookups there. Uh, so, for example, I just looked up uh, York in their in their uh, their web service. 
Uh, and the problem is you get a lot of results that are turned back. It's, it's doing a kind of fuzzy search, it's not doing a, a precise match. Uh, you'll notice there's two Yorks there, which are kind of, it's kind of interesting that, that the ordinance server would have two entities that are known as York. Um, you'll know that in the middle, kind of down there, York Ibrahim, which is obviously the Roman name of York, so that's actually in there somewhere as well. Um, but what we can do is, if we want to describe the place York accurately, we should look up um, and try to try to align it with a, an authority like the Ordnance Survey that has a published um, kind of uh, vocabulary. But the actual one that we want to put there is the city of York, if you can see that. That's the actual preferred label and the label of, of the city of York. And the late data model's got a bunch of kind of uh, other attributes hung off it. So it's got all the parishes of York, it's got the European region that it's a part of, and other information that's really useful. Um, but there's some other service as well, and, and there's one service coming out, a uh, project called Seneschal, which Carrie Binding and Morgan's doing, uh, which is going to be scotifying the um, uh, English heritage, the source, the monument terms, and the period terms, and their other thesaurus. Uh, but at the moment, we've got Library of Congress is, uh, publishes this stuff as well. Um, so the idea of how this all relates to ADS Easy is um, this is a picture of our collection management system. Uh, this is what the curators and digital archivists use to actually manage. Uh, this, these, uh, these data sets that are positive to us. Um, but what we, what we want to start doing is, 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 is more accurately describing, because you'll notice they're all, most of them are free text. I mean, some of the monument, the source uh, monument terms uh, types, we've got drop downs, because those are, those are well defined lists. But for like Library of Congress, there's so many that it's impossible, so it's a free text entry. But what we, what we can do, and what, what I'm going to start doing, is, is actually doing lookups to those linked data endpoints, to the Sparkle endpoints. So, if someone is going to put in, for a Library of Congress term, something like archaeology, they can do the lookup against the Sparkle endpoint, and then I can return all the results that come back. So in the Library of Congress subject heading, if you have a look, there's some, they've got, like archaeology, they've got these dashes and these extensions uh, that they, they do. Um, and then the user can select archaeology and say, that's the archaeology I mean, not archaeology of Alaska or archaeology of Alberta. Um, and then it can more accurately align that data with, with uh, what they actually mean. So the idea is to incorporate something like this into ADS Easy as well. So we'll be looking up in uh, the Seneschal outputs, which will be the source of monument terms, looking up to um, geodames, to uh, ordnance survey, uh, and basically allowing uh, uh, the, the metadata to be more accurately aligned with what, what it actually means more, more consistently. Um, but then this is also kind of hiding the complexity of all the linked data stuff. So you don't really know that you're using linked data, but we can actually associate linked data with the metadata that you're creating as well. So, so this is kind of the vision that we like, the direction we like to go, but um, we're kind of, we've still got some work to do on it to, to actually uh, make, it, make it work. So uh, that's that. I hope it made sense. Uh, thank you.